It's my first brood, it's F1 Juvenile Alpha from. Wow, Argentia, wow. Oh, it's beautiful fish. I think it's not that now. Oh gosh. Wow. wow. This is wild cut. Oh. I would feel like I'm obsessed over Central American secret. I cannot explain why. It's just, uh, inside me. It's just mental, I don't know. I am here in Lando Lakes, Florida. No sign of any butter, but plenty of awesome cichlids here at Max Cichlids, guys. I'm all sweaty. We just got out of the greenhouse. It was definitely worth it. You don't want to miss this. And you collected this yourself, right? Yes, right. Uh, this tuba I collect uh, like, like wigglers. And I raised them and uh, they were the spawn, but uh, unfortunately it was first spawn and they all of uh, wiggler fry disappeared. But it's, it's normal for first, uh, for youngest uh, juvenile uh, fish. fish. Oh. <laughs> And you see wow. more red pigment, male. Oh. So the red, the males have more red. Yes, right. Uh, male has more red pigment. Uh, if you compare with uh, the tuba from real Tarapotua, it's uh, San Jose, San Juan basin. They they have less red pigment. You see, the, even younger, even juvenile has more red pigment. Wow. Beautiful male, and you see where the ham. Gorgeous fish. That's crazy. You collected those when they were wigglers themselves. Yes, right. Uh, and they, they made it to breathe. Wow. That's pretty incredible, man. That's pretty incredible. And now what else we have? My favorite fish, Trebraherus uh, rutisma. Okay. It's uh, extremely rare fish. I'm gonna show you Sirbaheros Rutisma. Costa Rican, uh, Costa Rican secret, but uh, at this time it's uh, uncommon to collect in Costa Rica. And uh, my last trip, um, I tried to uh, collect them, but we we couldn't find them. Wow. wow. And my next trip, uh, it's gonna be to Panama because in Panama it's common. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe they migrant there. Yeah. But unfortunately, no Rutisma in Costa Rica anymore. Wow. Wow. So I just saw this fish. And what makes this your favorite fish? Uh, Rutisma is my favorite oh fish. Oh my gosh. It's really beautiful. But. You see the color. Now, is that a male or a female? Do you I know? I think it's male. The problem, I cannot, uh, I haven't breed them yet. Okay. Like uh, two years ago, I lost my breeding pair. Mm. I think this female. And you collected these in the wild yourself? No, this the fish, uh, no, it's fish from uh, Duncan Hell. I. Uh, Poach of them like a juvenile, like like fry, okay. and I raise them. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, get them more. I'm planning my trip to Panama uh, to let uh, wildcat with Isma. And uh, my goal is to breed them and uh, introduce them for hobbyists. Wow! Now is this about as big as they get? Or would they get even bigger than this? Is this full grown? I think it's uh, it's maximum maximum size. Okay. Wow. I want to show you yeah. one of my favorite uh, species, but it's not uh, Costa Rican. It's Via uh, Milanora. Oh, I can see them. Some big boy sticking out of that pipe. Yeah. It's like even tropical. <laughs> it's the same. Ooh. It's not good for us, but uh, it's good for seafood. It's... Wow. It's so 
Just really pure. Okay, that, oh, that's <laughs> wow, that's a big male. It's big male. Wow, okay. I keep them separate because uh, male can kill the male. Like wow. this is wild cut. Yeah, Hamilanora. You see, this is so colorful. That is a gorgeous fish. It's a gorgeous fish. Uh, I mean, that's he's he's close to what, like eight nine inches at least, something like that. I think so. Yeah. Woo. Wow. I keep them separate. And oh, what you see, it's a juvenile primate. It's a trematulatus. Trematulatus. Okay. Wow. It's, it's, yeah, it's a uh, it's a rare it's a rare location. And people and hobbyists like this fish too. Wow. And uh, and uh, now I wanna show you uh, another fish. It's the Baharus uh, Alcatron. Okay. It's, it's my juvenile. And were these fish born here at the hatchery? Or did you collect these? Or uh, it's F1. Okay. F1. It's for my wild uh, breeders. But uh, I want to show you this now because they already has uh, they already have color. Oh yeah, they do. Wow. And that's uh, Alta France. Yes, Alta France. Cabra Hills Alta France. Wow. It's a really beautiful fish. And do you know where these are from? Like where are they usually found in the wild? Uh, it's a soft, soft part of Costa Rica. Okay. It's a, uh, endemic fish for Costa Rica. It's common in Panama too. Now, what what attracted you to these these Costa Rican cichlids and these South American cichlids, as opposed to African cichlids or something else? Why why the Costa Rican and the South America? I don't know. I just uh, I would say like I'm obsessed over Central American cichlids. I cannot explain why. <laughs> Inside me, it's just mental. I don't know. <laughs> I know uh, logically, uh, African seafood is more colorful, but it's different. Even uh, if we're talking about even South America, but I don't know. I have passion, yeah, in Central America. No, that's amazing. That's yeah. awesome because you're just a hobbyist at heart. Yeah, now yeah. you have. You have maxcichlids.com where people, you have a list where people can come check out your fish for sale, right? You yes, have some yeah. fry available? Yes, uh, also you can find me on my uh, Facebook page, the Max Cichlid, in Caraguanse. Okay. And, uh, this fish in a hobby uh, has more time, but, and then it, it disappeared. And now I try to uh, advertise this fish for hobbyists. I think it's awesome that you're working with fish that aren't necessarily popular in the hobby. Maybe they were popular before, or maybe they were never popular, right, right, but yeah. you're trying to, you know, Some people, uh, make them available. It's pretty good and beautiful fish for sure. Then. Oh, there's lots of babies. Is that a batch? Is that a batch of fry? Oh, wow, they changed. Oh, wow. Wow, they, they like change color. You see, they not beautiful this morning. Uh, what they uh, have breeding uh, color, it's much beautiful. But like I said before, I prepared this wet and I drain and they have, they like under stress, they stress out. And this is why they change color. Still very beautiful. It's still very beautiful. It's very beautiful. But but yeah, but you're just saying that like since you drain the water, they're not really in their breeding colors right now. Right, right, because they're a little stressed out. That's okay. Really, really they stressed out. And so is, is that a batch of their fry, or is that something else? It's fry. It's a other fish. It's a mornay. Oh, okay. It's their fry. It's uh, like convict, but it's a uh, endemic convict. In Costa Rica. And they breed just like regular convicts, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're at your home right now. This is on your own property. This is something you do in your personal time. But is this something you do, like, professionally as well? In Russia, yes. Uh, I, I had a big experience, but, uh, a lot of practice. Um, when I moved to the U.S., I just, uh, it's just my hobby. To move to the U.S. Is, uh, has given me more opportunity to breed and raise my uh, favorite uh, fish because I closer to 
you know, geographically, I cross it to Central America. I can go to Central America and collect them. How many times have you been collecting in Central America so uh, far? Uh, usually, it's the one time per year. I hope I can uh, continue to do this. It takes uh, a lot of time and uh, patience. Argentia, wow. Oh, it's beautiful fish and it's a Mexican fish. And okay, it's from Mexico. It's, yes, it's Mexico. Okay. I purchased them like uh, fry and I raised them and uh, I hope I can breed them uh, for an introduce of uh, uh, hobby. Wow. It's a gorgeous fish. It's Is gorgeous. that a male? Yes, it's male. I don't know, maybe this female. Yes, I think it's female. It looks like female. I have a group of them like 10. That's it's, it's better for all of the uh, Central American people, it's better to keep them like group. They spread their aggression for other fish. For example, if you keep them like fair, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a good decision because all our aggression or male aggression uh, just towards female. If you keep them like a, a colony, they more common. I want to show you one more. It's a Trebra Hell Salfari. Genus uh, Trebra Hell. It's my, it's my favorite. I want to show you my juvenile, my first brood. It's F1. Okay. And uh, I cannot show you at this moment uh, wildcat breeders because they uh, hatch the clutch at this moment. It's a Trebra Hell Salfari. These are F1 fry that you hatched yes, out? Yes, it's F1. Uh, Juvenile, it's pretty, wow. it's pretty good fish. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. And about how big will these guys get? Uh, the same size like uh, Rutisma. I think it's like how many inches? It's like six inches, six ma maximum seven. Okay, oh, by the way, it's a uh, female Melanora. Remember, wow. I showed you male. I keep, I keep them separate because, uh, wow, if I put her together with my own, wow. Did you have these nets specifically made? They like perfectly fit the vet. Yes, it's, it's uh, not specific for the vet. It's oh for, my gosh. It's uh, really so colorful. Wow. And what is this one again? It's uh, Andina Clara Soruli Punctatus. Wow. And now is that a male? I think so, it's male. It's my first brood, it's F1 Juvenile. It's, uh, I think it, it works. It, it works. <laughs> oh, he has his own little section over here? Yeah, it's separate. It's like, I don't know, like around like this side. Wow. I, 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 and it's wild caught. It's wild caught. I think it's not that now. <laughs> He's going to be as big as the net, huh? <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, wow. This is a wild caught yeah. male trimac. Oh, whoo. Nope. <laughs> wow. And how big was he when you first got him? Was he smaller or did you? Like tough. Wow. It's uh, extremely aggressive. This is why I keep <laughs> even uh, them separate. So when I breed them, and see male, by the way, on the other side. Okay. But they still have pride, they can find because I can I cannot leave them together. One problem to keep a, a bigger safely is you have to separate them uh, from male to male because for example when one of our partner ready to spawn and the other is not ready, oh it's a uh, it's big problem. The male can kill the male for like for a few minutes. Wow. Even in these big size tanks, because these are these are like burial vaults, right? Right. Okay. Right. And how, approximately how many gallons does each one hold if they're uh, full? 200, 250 gallons. Wow. It's, it's right. And how many how many of them do you have in here? Um, I have a third of us. Wow. And uh, I still can uh, handle it. And um, in the future, I just I can uh, put divider the seat. That's smart. You and can next, divide up each year. Next step, put the wider. And <laughs> other next step after the wider, maybe increase my height. Okay. But I still can handle it. 
and you have like automatic water change. You want a well system here? Oh yes, it's like automatically water change. Uh, you see. It's okay, so like, so this PVC, like over here, like you can kind of see this one because yes, so the water see. would come in, yeah, the water would come in, in here, yes, and up, go down there, and then drain there, yes, then there, and the uh, outdoor, and then it goes outside. Yes, right. To be honest, it's uh, much easier than um, aquarium aquarium system. Before when I build this uh, hatchery, I have a total of fifty uh, aquarium. Oh, it was so difficult. I had to drain every week. It takes me all day now. Just see them and maybe one time per week I just I just drain of siphon. That's it. The water change automatically it's pretty it's pretty good. And That's to us it's uh, more economic. I don't use either you see, it's like oh. <laughs> And then you just use air, right? Everything like there's this air air stones and stuff in each vat, right? You right, just get air. Right. And you have like a central air pump or something that runs everything? Like uh, one big air pump? Yes, right. And back in Russia, you worked with, I saw this on the website, you worked with Sturgeon? Is that, you worked yes, with Sturgeon yes, back yes, then? Sturgeon, uh, yes, it was my uh, practice, uh, it's my practice working in a university. And uh, I tried to use my knowledge and um, like put them on a uh, simple. And so in the nematobos. They look like Africa. They reminiscent me African seafood. Wow. You see their face? Yeah, and this is a co it's pretty common in Costa Rica, this one? Yes. My last trip, uh, I didn't uh, I didn't find Rotisma, but only Busindia. It's different Kerbahero Busindia. It's juvenile. Wow. These are F1s? Yes, F1. Wow. And these are from uh, Costa Rica? Costa Rica. It's the same um, it's habitat like a uh, rotisma, uh, Saxaola basin. But unfortunately, uh, I couldn't find rotisma. Like I said before, maybe they migrate more south. Than Panama. Panama. Right. The next trip, I hope I can collect them and bring them back uh, to the U.S. and uh, breed them and introduce them to hobbyists.